Welcome everyone to A Journey of Riches, the interview series with the authors, book number six, The Benefit of Challenge. And I'm here with Julie Kennedy and uh, she wrote a chapter in the book and uh, Julie is, she works with high functioning trauma survivors. Welcome to the call today, Julie. Thanks, John. And uh, I was really brave and courageous of you to come out and, and share your story. There's been a lot on social media about uh, people saying me too, sharing their me too story. And uh, sexual abuse is a topic that I guess in your generation and in my generation as well, uh, it's just swept underneath the mat and still to this day, it's swept on underneath the mat and you came out and, and shared your story. What inspired you to do that? I just felt like it was time, time to find my voice around it and to um, express my story. Um, yeah, I just thought it would be beneficial not only for me, um, mm -hmm. for others as well. I imagine that would have been quite uh, liberating for you. Yes, it is very liberating, but it was a process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just feel that maybe even a year or more ago, mm -hmm. I may not have been able to write the mm -hmm. way I've written this um, chapter. Um, I feel that in the last year in particular, I've um, really expanded mm -hmm. in my growth and healing. And I think that really helped me to cultivate more confidence to write it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what was the most challenging aspect of dealing with sexual abuse? For me, it was um, not knowing what was going on within me um, because that particular abuse was repressed, I felt uncomfortable in my body. Um, I always had a feeling that something wasn't quite right and I didn't know what that feeling was, but it was there. And because I had that feeling, it made me feel very um, disconnected from my body and mm -hmm. I didn't really want to be in my body because the body had the memory Mm. It was because it was repressed, it was in my unconscious, yet it was driving me because of the memory within the body. Mm -hmm. So subconscious memory and programming from the abuse was the driver from, for my life, my actions and um, behaviours. So I was trying to um, escape that. Mm. feeling of not feeling good mm. and that's that was just messing up my my psyche my being my life so yeah it was that was very troublesome for me yeah and when I did finally have the memory through the breathwork process and I discussed it with my mom and she said well Yes, you know, uh, when I explained to her the visions I'd seen in the process, she said, yeah, I believe that did happen to you. It was really difficult too because I was quite shocked that my mother had that um, feeling or, or that inner knowing that this was possibly happening to me and, you know, I had to go through all the motions of, well, why didn't she do something about it and, you know, all those thoughts that came up and after some time um, I think this is why it was quite a long process for me um, with the healing on this trauma was because of my mom's admission and also then not wanting to discuss it any further with me but then when I did um, my own therapy and healing and study when and I discovered you know my mother's history um, it made it um, more, how do I explain this? Um, 
acceptable for me when I mm. realised, you know, her journey and what she'd been through. Mm. And, um, you know, she did say to me, she did discuss it with my father and said that she didn't want me going over there. And he said, well, don't be ridiculous. And in that time and era of my mum's day, you know, well, what the husband said was usually what went. Mm. And um, also I think for my mum too, why she probably didn't do so much about it was because she was actually a victim of abuse herself. Mm. And that's what I found out when I researched my family history. So that made it difficult for my mum. And she alluded to that into a letter she wrote to me after I had my first son. So, you know, I can't hold on to that. And, and um, as I've written in my chapter, you know, I don't blame my parents for that. But it's also an interesting thing there too. Um, the man that abused me was a friend of my father's. And he was a drinking friend of my father's because my father had an addiction to alcohol in his younger years. So it's interesting. You know, that was the awareness that I got around the power of addiction, you know, mm -hmm. how that can actually impact your life and how it influences even, you know, everything in your life. It's like my father might, didn't protect me. He was more <laughs> interested in being with his buddy and having a drinking buddy. Yeah, so. Do you feel that you had, you got closure on that chapter of your life now? Yes, because, you know, I researched my family three generations, you know, when I did my master's, so my thesis was on that. And when I worked out our family history and I could see the pattern and how it had it trickled down into, you know, each generation and how my parents parented us, it made sense to me. Mm -hmm. So once I knew that intellectually as well as emotionally, when I could piece them all together, all the pieces together, it was just like, oh, okay, you know, my parents are doing the best they could mm -hmm. with what they knew and all the trauma that they were carrying. So, yeah, I'm at peace with that, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And how yeah. is that? How has that empowered you in your life? Empowered me as, well, as knowing that I feel... Right. So, sorry? I, I, yeah, just more from the... How has it empowered you? Like, are you now helping other people that are going through similar situations? Like, uh, normally I find that people have gone through, like, uh, major abuses like that. It's actually empowered them to go on and help others. And I was just curious to know how that empowered you. Oh, definitely. I want to go on and help others. Yes, you know, I, I believe that's why I've experienced yeah. all of the trauma that I have in my life, you know, is to reach the point where I finally reached, uh, well, a significant point that, you know, I'm able to go on and do that with a powerful voice. Whereas before I was sort of humming and hiring about, oh, you know, am I going to do it? When I'm going to do it? Well, it's now I am doing it. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people they're still in victimhood and uh, they don't they don't feel empowered by that situation. They feel like that's the worst thing that ever happened to them, and they don't turn it into a positive. Whereas you're turning it into a positive, and you're helping other women and so on and so forth. So it uh, it doesn't have to be a negative experience in your life, right? So you can Absolutely turn it into not. a positive and something that's it's gone on for you to help, you know, women in your community and so on and so forth. Yeah. In saying that, though, it's a process. I believe you have to go through whatever it is your journey is to actually get to that point. Oh, totally. You, yeah, totally. You are able to, to stand in your power and speak yeah. your truth and, and, and just own everything about your past and who you are and honour that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you're at that point now, right? I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It's been a big journey, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm here. And, yeah. you know, in saying that also, I believe that there's always an ongoing healing and learning for myself as well. You know, I don't think because, okay, you know, I feel really great and that is, is great. Yeah. I'm open to learning more and experiencing more. And, you know, if another layer comes up, another layer comes up and I'll deal with that when it comes up. Yeah. yeah. And so you alluded to before about the uh, mind-body connection. You're using breath work to. How was it that? I mean, that was a big journey for you as well. 
Yes. Yeah, I was drawn to uh, breath work. Um, I think it's a very, very powerful tool. Uh, it helped me a lot. Um, I think the breath, well, if we're not breathing, we're dead. So, you know, it's, it is a powerful tool. <laughs> because we can't live without it. So, um, but the thing with the breath, it takes you out of the mind, all right? So the mind-body connection is, is, we need both. So what I found for myself with, with the breath work, it took me out of my head because I am really prone to overthinking, overanalyzing, and with the breath work, it takes you into the body, and I needed to go into the body. Uh -huh. And the body... I needed to go in there and I needed to get into the sensations, feel what was going on in my body and work with my body and stop analysing and overthinking all the time. So that's why the breath work really worked beautifully for me. Um, that wasn't an easy journey either, you know. Mm. It's very confronting and um, it, that process uh, of breath work, um, I did the diploma and you know it it at a stage there I thought oh my goodness I just don't know if I'm going to be able to keep doing this but you know I just found the strength and courage to push through because I just believed that it was going to work out for me and and it did and in saying that I think that um doing any sort of body work is brilliant, but you also need the cognitive work as well. You mm -hmm. need to find a balance, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people saying, oh, no, you don't need to do any cognitive work now. It's all in the body. Just do the body work. Get mm -hmm. Clear the body. Yes, to a point. But there's also a need for learning skills and tools also to be able to manage those thoughts and to manage that emotion and to manage whatever chaos comes up when you're working with the body. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that balance, it can get a bit messy. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you certainly had your fair share of uh, challenges with the body. I mean, you're in and out of hospital. I remember messaging you one time, and yeah, you, when you finally got back to me, you just had surgery, and so you've been through some really big challenges. And w was that re related to suppressed emotions? Uh, I believe so. I, I think the last um, hospital admission for me was, was a really like, oh, this is it sort of thing, you know. Uh, as I wrote, you know, I felt like a part of me needed to die, you know, like and there was a part of me that wanted to die because it was just, oh, my goodness, you know, is there going to be how much more of this is there, you know, mm -hmm. and, and how much more work do I need to do and how much more emotion do I have to let out? And um, it was just a really crucial time in um, March this year for me. Mm -hmm. I think <clears throat> that's what also helped me to get a lot more clear on what I want to do and where I want to go and, and enabled me to write the way I wrote too. Mm. So, you know, because when I was lying in hospital and I was thinking, oh, gosh, well, this is serious, you know, <laughs> well, um, yeah, okay, do you really want to die or do you want to be here? And, and the answer was, oh, I want to be here. I'm not finished here yet. Mm -hmm. Oops, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, so I looked at it like that, you know. It was, a, it was probably um, a bit of a little nudge or a bit more than a little nudge. It was a major nudge, yeah. Yeah, that was a... a you could have, you, yeah, basically to give people some insight, you had kidney failure. I had um, a blood clot on my kidney. Uh, yeah, on my clot, liver. Yeah, on yeah. your liver and liver or kidney? No, a kidney. Kidney, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can die from that. That's a, if you didn't have operation, you would have died. So, well, they just got to clear the blood, the blood thinners, they clear. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they clear the clot. Yeah, yeah, but it can, it, it, it can, okay. yes be okay. very dangerous yeah yeah, okay. yeah and it damaged my um kidney um i wrote that in the book too mm -hmm. so um about they said about 40 percent and um yeah and after realizing that i really wanted to be here and do what i've got to do mm -hmm. and i started to focus 
on that and open up to um, my more of my spiritual, well, let it back in, reconnect. Mm -hmm. And then things started to happen, you know, just happened for me and, 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 and there was more flow. So, um, and also when I got um, the imaging of my kidney, it was only a few weeks later, it had healed. Um, 90%, which is... That's extraordinary. You've been doing yeah, a, lot of, a lot of work. And yeah. so it's inspiring. It's an inspiring read. And I know that uh, there's, you know, a lot of people are going to relate to it because, you know, is one in three people are sexually abused. And it really is how you triumphed over that trauma. And... Yeah, well, yeah. I, I would like to get your insights on, on trauma and uh, how you deal with trauma and how you help other people uh, deal with trauma. Okay. Um, well, the main thing I found for myself, which I work with, um, is how it affects your um, nervous system. Mm -hmm. It really dysregulates the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And I found that it was really troublesome for me and for most people that are... Um, ex or well, survivors of mm -hmm. um, sexual trauma or any abuse mm -hmm. is, is how it affects the nervous system because it wires you for high alert, you know, so you're, you're always, oh, 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 you know, what's this danger? Because uh, in particular for me, as I said, you know, um, it was I had no memory of it. And also um, Peter Levine puts it really well, like he explains it beautifully, you know, how when, when your um, system is aroused, the fight, flight, freeze response, if you don't complete the full circle, then it gets trapped in the body. So that's when the reenactment comes out is because you're look, the body is looking to get rid of it and, and, and complete the cycle. So whatever that is to shake it off or, or just to have some completion there. Um, and that's why I was always getting more abuse and, and the um, reenactment of that was because in my subconscious, you know, there it was and playing in my, un it was in my unconscious really. And mm -hmm. um, my subconscious was playing the, the behavioral patterns. Um, yes, yeah, so that wasn't complete. Mm -hmm. My trauma cycle wasn't complete. So one of the ways of trying to com complete it on an unconscious level is attracted in and thinking it's going to be completed. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't complete that cycle. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, basically what yeah. you're saying is that you went through this uh, experience, a traumatic experience, and it was kind of like a, a, a half loop. The That's loop right. Closed. So you actually need closure on that at an unconscious level. So you're attracting the different things that your mm -hmm. mind thinks it can give you closure to close the loop but actually that's not the process of healing. So it's more working with the, a therapist or doing breath work. And, and I believe that you've created a program where people, for your own experience and your own studies and, and whatnot, where people can work with you and they can get the closure, yes. they can close that yes. loop. It's very yes, important because you just keep yeah. attracting and attracting until the mind gets uh, resolution or until it gets closure. Well, that's right. That's what it's looking for. That's what the body's yeah. looking for. And the body's like, you know, hello, I'm here, you know, as well. Yeah, yeah. So, it, and the body's always trying to get the, our attention, you know. If we're ignoring the body, things are going to happen. Things are, like what happened to me, you know, with getting ill and other things that have happened in my life. It's like, don't forget your body. And, you know, there's a lot of, I think, spiritual movement that say, oh, we're not our body. Mm. Yes, well, yes, well, but... Where do we live when we're on the planet? We're in our body. <laughs> if we don't body, we're not being So, you know, we have to love and look after our body yeah, as well. Totally. Yeah, and accept true. our body. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's another thing is a self-acceptance. But that's in the book. So, yeah. Um, yes, with writing the chapter um, gave me more clarity on what, how I want to put a little program together and do a little workshop. Yes, which I'm working on at the moment. So uh, it's, it's exciting, really exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. yeah. And of course, uh, people can read your chapter in the journey of riches, the benefit of challenge. It's uh, really just to help people that have find themselves in a challenging, a challenging situation or need some inspiration or motivation 
and it's filled with a, a collaboration of many different authors. So it's an inspiring read. And the book will be released uh, on Amazon at the end of this month and people can get themselves a copy. Uh, why should people uh, read your chapter? Or what's the benefit for people to read your chapter, Joy? Well, I think the benefit is um, to realise that just because you've had really um, tough time in your life, or, or especially, well, actually, just because you've been a, had sexual abuse doesn't mean that everything's going to be bad in your life, you know. For a while, it is really bad because I, I talk about that, and I and I really did suffer a lot mm. from from my abuse, you know, and it was really difficult. and And I'm not going to deny that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I believe, like you know, no matter how difficult life gets, there's always hope. And I think with myself, it, I just give up. No, I just didn't give up wanting to reach through and get to the other side. You know, it was like, um, you. no, you know, I just, I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going no matter what. And it gave me more personal strength, determination. And, um, you know, some of our most painful struggles give us our most most growth, you know. And, yeah, it's true. And, you know, I find that, you know, I got post-traumatic stress disorder but I also got post-traumatic growth you know mm. and it kind of like in the mix you look at it all and you know when you can get to the stage where I've got to it's like well you know here I am what a what, look at my life you know I've got a lot to be grateful for a yeah. lot you know yeah. and I am grateful so <sighs> you I'm just really happy that I'm at this place that I am. Yeah, you have you have calibrated the experience. So. Yeah. yeah, and you know, look, I notice that some people when they write about things when they're in this place, mm -hmm. and I know that not all sexual abuse victims are or survivors, sorry, are where I'm at, and mm -hmm. it can be really difficult mm -hmm. to to hear this sometimes and to read people's stories coming from a place where I'm coming from and you know I just want to encourage and and say to them just hang in there and just you know get the help that you need and don't do it alone mm -hmm. we can't do it alone and we're not meant we to yeah totally. totally yeah and reach out you know and it's just like I know how difficult it is because I've been in it. Yeah. You, know, you need to go to that place. You need to visit it. You need to actually express it. You need to talk about it. And yeah. it's all, it's, yeah, it just, yeah. Like no one understands you. And mm, yeah, yeah. It's very and difficult. It, yeah. It, yeah. And it's yeah. very, it's, it happens a lot, it happens way too often. It's one in three. And, uh, you know, I've gone through a Me Too story. Uh, you have. Uh, and you go into great detail on the book. So it's, yeah, it's very difficult. And I've done a lot of different personal development programs to explore that. And uh, it's challenging. And, yeah, um, yeah it creates a lot of confusion um, for people. And, you know, not just in, the, the, in the, the body connection, but also on the mind as well. And uh, it's never good uh, when you're going through it. But on the other side, there is, there is uh, a silver lining to the, to the dark cloud. You know, it's a divine storm and there is a, a, a gift uh, yeah. that if you're willing to explore the darkest places uh, that you're afraid to go because it's almost like you're, you know, we're afraid of our own light and um, that very experience can give, has given you so much uh, if you'll only shine the light on that area. And uh, your chapter is a great il illustration of that and uh, super exciting for it to be released. And thank you so much, Julie Kennedy, for spending time with me today. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Bye.